You're listening to the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. My name is Bill McIntyre, and it's time for this week's Long Island News, the show that talks to newsmakers and other important people from Nassau and Suffolk County that matter to Long Island and Long Islanders like you. So each week, we'll have a conversation about issues that affect all of us. I live on Long Island just like you, and I want to know more about the people making the big decisions that affect all of us. Well, this week, I'm happy to welcome back to our show Ms. Jennifer DeSena, the supervisor of the town of North Hempstead, to tell us all about the great things happening in the township. Ms. DeSena, welcome back to this week's Long Island News. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here. We last spoke to you before the election, um, which you won re-election. Uh, what's new? What's some of the biggest things that you've been doing? Uh, I guess it's the last nine months or so. Well, one of the things is we are filling some key roles in uh, in in the government. We have had some departments that had no leader, no commissioner for years. One of them is our Department of Public Works. So imagine, why did we have no commissioner for five years? Mm. So once I, uh, after this election, I, I have a majority of the town board and we are working together to make sure we fill these key roles so that we can deliver to the residents. So I was able to, to hire a woman from Port Washington who wanted to leave the private sector and work closer to home in her community. So now with her help, we will be moving some long stalled projects in our parks. And, uh, you know, that's just one example of because we are about infrastructure. You know, the town delivers the services that you need for your neighborhood, garbage, roads, parks, yeah. buildings. Uh, and so we've got to have a, you know, a strong workforce and, and good leaders to deliver that at the lowest cost possible to the residents. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in construction, we always said, you know, that's one of the things that we didn't necessarily, I don't know, agree with, or it kind of makes you stop and think for a second that the job often goes to the lowest bidder. And, uh, you know, that's, that's uh, that is very important. And we are always careful. We review that. We get mm-hmm. bids. You know, we have a procurement policy. We receive bids. Then we look at the lowest bidder and the second lowest bidder. And we say, wait a minute, does right. this company really have what we need? And if they don't, you know, we, we take additional steps. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, we certainly would not want to make a mistake like that. No, right, right. Uh, but I think oftentimes it, it's so uh, um, attractive. Oh, my goodness, we can get all this done for that amount. Great, let's go. But you will pay the consequences. And in, in fact, you know, a prior administration hired a company to install a dock at a lighthouse. But it turns out the company wasn't able to install docks. Right. So this prior administration canceled the contract and and we have a, a half-built dock. Mm. So, you know, it's it's a problem that now, you know, we're finally working to find a solution. But we've got to be responsible when we when we do the work. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's a tough job. Um, a few items, uh, Newsday recently reported a, uh, Nassau Controller's Audit of North Hempstead. That was the building department thing. Significant deficiencies. Uh, flawed our online permit application system. Uh, lack of communication with residents, blah, blah, blah. Change in the powers in the town's top office. Now, obviously, hiring some of those people fixed some of these problems. Well, you know, there the building department is in need of many solutions. It's a problem that we've we've been living with for over 15 years it won't be fixed overnight. Um, but this audit conducted by Nassau County um, really um, supported a lot of the things that, that I suspected. The software system, you know, all the towns are going to an online system, but the one that the town of North Hempstead um, purchased years ago was never implemented correctly. It's not used by anyone else mm-hmm. on the island, and um, and the town never digitized its records. So when you when you're using an online system yeah. but you didn't digitize your records, you're not going to give the result that your residents deserve. Right, right. So we are we're going to make we're going to have a series of reforms. Uh one will be announced very soon, but one of the most important things is that we break down the wall that has existed between the building department and the applicants and professionals who need its services. Mm. We have to make it accountable. It has has to work for the residents, right. not for itself. Right. Um, something I was unaware of my whole life, uh, only because I never dealt with it, um, if uh, 
and this is something I think it's Nassau County. I certainly don't think it's just North Hempstead. Mm -hmm. I think in general, um, if I got a line of credit on the value of my house, so I want to do home improvements, so I go and get a line of credit from a bank, and they say, okay, when I close that line of credit, I have to make sure that I go to the town or the county to have that notation removed from my property a lien or, you know, you, mm -hmm. you have to have the lien removed. They charge you $750 for that. Mm, yeah, that is that is tough. That that hurts. Um, I will give some credit to our, we have a new receiver of taxes, Mary Jo Collins, and she has been out in the neighborhoods meeting with civic groups, senior groups, explaining to them what they can do to um, address the assessed value of their property. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in my first two years, I was able to cut our town our town taxes by five percent and ten percent good deal but that only that if that depends on the assessed value of your home right. so right. you you've got to um you've got to check that and the people who have not grieved their taxes unfortunately mm -hmm. they are they are now paying more because the people who did grieve their taxes were able to lower it so right. Right. it's tough and um if you if any of my residents in north hempstead uh, want assistance figuring out how to grieve their taxes, I urge them to contact Mary Jo Collins, a receiver of taxes. And she's also um, created new ways for people to be notified, you know, so that a senior maybe can designate a friend or family mm -hmm. member to get a reminder right. that your taxes are due. Yeah. I mean, my taxes are paid by my bank, right. uh, you know, because I have a mortgage. But people who don't anymore, yep. unfortunately, they, they end up late and then they have to pay a penalty. Yeah, that's... The other thing, too, is, uh, you know, a lot of the banks and the healthcare system, they're all going to the online portals. Yes. I feel like I'm constantly reminding them that older folks are not so hip with right. this online stuff. I, I know somebody who's afraid to open a bank portal that they could, I mean, it'd make it a, a lot more convenient for them. I mean, you can deposit checks, you can do all kinds of things from that. But they fear that that added online presence is another opportunity for somebody who shouldn't be in there to get into their Absolutely. There are hackers out there. There are scammers out yeah. there. And so I, I understand why people would try and stay offline. Right, right. But it's to their own detriment. You know, I I think what we need, like uh, speaking to the health community, they said that they've, uh, this one instance, he started actually training people at the front desk mm -hmm. of doctor's offices so that when they told you the doctors in your network that you were covered, that you are, we've we've all seen those issues. You call somebody, say, "Am I covered?" Oh, yes. You you get yes to death, and then you go for the appointment, and as you're leaving, they're telling you your copay is five hundred dollars, and you have a huge bill. Right, right. Um, and and there are ghost bills too. Uh, doctors sending bills. I I don't even know that doctor. I never met the guy. Well, he stuck his head in the door while you were under. And, you know, it needs some attention, yes. I think. But but I think in some instances, I'm just basically saying that folks have to take into account the elder population on Long Island. It's getting big. Absolutely. I mean, that's why the medical communities are doing so well here. It's kind of a, a, no, a no brainer. And that know? might be a great time for me to plug our Project Independence. Go for it. Network. In in the town of North Hempstead, this, this program is 20 years old now, and it's just been growing, and it's wonderful. We have 17,000 seniors. And by the way, senior means 60 years old. So right. if you live in the town of North Hempstead and you're 60, call 311 and register. Um, but we have, uh, we put out a lot of information and some of it is um, financial tips. Some mm. of it is health information. We also have social workers and nurses. We have um, companies that have been vetted by our team. So if you need a handyman, you might call really? someone who's in this network that we have vetted. Wow. We also have um, gatherings. You know, we have an, um, advisory meetings where people come and they hear speakers about what's the best type of exercise, you know, yeah. as you as you get older. So um, this is one of the jewels of, of North Hempstead. That's is, cool. Yes. Yeah, so I en encourage people to take advantage of and it. they can just call 311. Yep. That's call 311 to register and then you'll start receiving our newsletter and invitations to our information sessions. Um, it's a wonderful safety network yeah, so think. that people can age in place. Because, you know, staying in the home is, the uh, you know, 
it's the easiest and it's nice, you know, and, and by the way, we keep our seniors voices. Now we were speaking earlier about how, um, people have experience. They have life experiences, but as they get older, they might feel that no one is listening to them. Mm-hmm. We have a, a news station, you know, no competition for you, maybe, <laughs> uh, but no, every Friday morning, maybe another job. I, I, every Friday morning, we have a, a news program where we talk about issues that affect our seniors mm. and, and we have speakers. So, um, it's a way that we keep our seniors voices here. So we remember the lessons they've learned. They have a lot to offer. We, yeah, we, yeah. we have to listen. Well, yeah, it's funny. I, I visited Japan in the last, uh, two years, three years, twice we've been there. And, um, one of the things you notice is that they esteem their seniors. Yes. They don't disregard them. Um, and I think it's, it's a cultural thing. Right. Definitely. Uh, you get to be a certain age and, you know, the yeah. fast world doesn't really have time to sit right. down and. But this, this program is, is really That's great. addressing that. We are, we are keeping our seniors' voices at the table. Yeah. There's a lot yeah. of knowledge there. Absolutely. There really is. You're listening to this week's Long Island News on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. My name is Bill McIntyre and my guest today is Ms. Jennifer DeSena, supervisor of the town of North Hempstead. You've also announced that you're hosting the Stop Throwing Out Pollutants mm-hmm. program. So it offers town of North Hempstead residents the opportunity to dispose of dangerous and, chemi- and chemical waste that can't be disposed of with routine curbside pickups. Do you have a date for that? No, actually, okay. I don't. Okay, because we do, we do a couple of them each year. One mm-hmm. of them we do at Westbury High School, and so the residents on sort of the southern tier of North Hempstead love that one. It's very, we have a lot of people come, and then the other one, I believe we we do at least two a year. The other one is up in uh, at our Bar Beach Park, North Hempstead Beach Park in Port Washington. Westbury High School, June 29th. It is. Yeah. They, Did you just get that ma- that little voice in my head telling me things? That's magic, yeah, isn't that something? <laughs> Technology is grand when it works. Yes, yes. <laughs> and the others are in September and October. Okay, June 29th is yeah. the next one. Good okay. to know. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is that now you have that morning news show for for the older folks. Where mm-hmm. can they see that? Where can they get that? The host is by Zoom, so people would get a notice and then they'd be able to log on Zoom and and go right. to the they listen. The they listen to it. It's a radio show, oh. and and I believe they probably replay it we'll find out yeah we'll find out that's that's great though there's a lot of seniors looking for something like that and then there's there's a lot that just are not plugged in at all Mm -hmm. but like we keep saying on the show your politics is local yes you know a lot happens here we've all got our eye on the national circus right Right. and and really we need we do need to be here but you know george carlin said it you you go out in the street and ask people who their senators are and they don't know Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, it's uh, it's downright scary. Mm-hmm. I heard a great quote the other day: "A little knowledge will lead you to stubborn certainty. <laughs> a lot of knowledge will leave you lead you to an open mind." Oh wow! You know, and it's it's so true by evidence by when you go out in the street and just ask somebody who's your senator, they don't know. But if they do know, they'll then follow that up with whether they like them or not. Mm-hmm. And my follow up question to them is: What do you really know about? Them? Right? Why do you like them? I know one thing. Mm-hmm. You know, he did this or he did yeah. that. You say, and that's what you're going to base your whole. Right. You kind of jump to a conclusion. You right. know, one thing. You well, know. that's why people need to get to know their representatives. That's why this is great that I get to talk to people because some people don't. Even my friends don't know what does the town do. Right. You know what 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 services does the town provide? Right. Um, I have WCWP dot org is the radio show. Project Independence. Project Independence. There you go. Yeah. Project Independence. She's on it. That's it. Yeah. Project (laughs) Independence. Newsday uh, also reported that the town of North Hempstead will put a three million dollar federal grant into a system that's supposed to conserve Mm -hmm. uh, millions of gallons of water that are used every year on the irrigation of Harbor Links Golf Course in Mm -hmm. Port Washington. What's what goes on with that? What's the so we will be basically recycling water. We'll be capturing the water. We have a landfill. It's a capped landfill. Um, and next door to it is the golf course, which basically was built on the landfill, too. Uh, um, and we are using some water now. This is going to let us get all the water we need um, on our landfill to go to the golf course. So we won't be using any drinking water. On our golf course. Oh, gotcha. Which, you know, yeah. saves our water. Mm-hmm. It's a finite resource. Well, I, and we're the only, uh, I mean, I don't know if we're the only, but it's it, it 
We live over our water source. We live over our water source. We are different. Long Island is different yeah. than New York State. Yep. Some of the policies that Albany sends out, they just don't work for us. Mm-hmm. They might work upstate where they have reservoirs and they can tap yep. into other things, but they don't work for us. Yeah. You know, like garbage mm-hmm. too. I mean, mm-hmm. we, we have to, we're going to have to get our garbage off Long Island. How are we going to do that? Yep. More trucks? Yep. No, I think it's going to be technology. Some kind of technology, technology is going to be something that brings us into the. It has to be. But here's the thing. We have to have policies from New York State mm-hmm. and from the federal government that encourage that, you know, the waste to energy plants. Right. If, you know, some of the, some of the, the DEC rules, they're mm-hmm. just, they're impossible. Right. They're too expensive. They're too restrictive. So they're, they're hurting us. They're ba- so like this is a garbage is a responsibility at the town level, mm-hmm. but we're not getting help from the state and the federal government to make it work. Right, right, right. Well, when it starts piling up, mm-hmm. that's when, when <laughs> right? <laughs> no, I was in the room the other day with all the supervisors and the, you know, everyone brought along their, you know, solid waste commissioner. And those people, the solid waste commissioners, they can't even talk about it. They say, look, Long Island will end. <laughs> like, yeah, and, right. and we look around like, right. end. But like, if, if we don't get a solution, and it's going to happen in 2027, right? That's not that far, right? Could we create a new island? Uh, you know, an could, island of garbage. You, well, stranger things have been done. You know, we can build. There are things that have been built with ash. Yeah. So you know, you burn the ash in Covanta. Now you have the ash. You bring it to Brookhaven landfill, but that's closing in two years. Right. Oh. Two and a half years. You can use it, you. But again, the state has to loosen up their rules so that we can use it. Right, and you can't really build. start doing that until the state does that. It's not easy to, you know, in that instance, it's not easier to get forgiveness than permission. Right, you need to get permission first before you can even start. So, it. what some people have said is that next year, that's when we're going to have to get some changes because Long Island, our three million voters, are going to have to say. Yeah, you know, yeah. stop. Give well, it, give us solutions. You know, the one thing about Hochul, when people scream, she responds. Yes. I think that's how government's supposed to work. You know, she comes out with an idea and I listen to it on the radio and go, oh, my God, what what's mm-hmm. going on now? Mm-hmm. But when the, you know, the kickback comes and, right. and they start screaming and yelling, OK, she responds to that. Right. To me, that's fine. Yeah. You know. I, um, yeah. I mean, it. it it's scary for a little time, and it, say, it, it takes. I say Cuomo never did that. People screamed and yelled at him. He didn't care. Mm. You know, You're right. uh, mm-hmm. kind of stoic as far as no, no, no. That's it. And, mm-hmm. You know, my mind is made up. Right, right, and that's kind How'd of how did that work out for him? Anyway, well, there you go. Yeah. So what else is going on at North Hampstead? You know, we're doing How? as as I said, we're we're building. But um, so what are your thoughts on the upcoming election? You have oh, I don't want to talk about that. No. Uh, <laughs> <sighs> Okay. Mine is next year. Right. Okay. I don't want to talk about elections this year. I'm, yeah. oh. I'm grateful I can just work. Right. I think that people aren't happy with the way this turned out. People on both sides mm-hmm. aren't aren't happy with how this this contest turned out. Oh yeah. We should have come up with better candidates. Well, you know, it's uh, and I go back to my buddy George Carlin because he he said it a long time ago. You know, I can go to Dunkin' Donuts and get fifty seven kinds of donuts. <laughs> I, I can get forty seven kinds of coffee. But when it comes to a presidential election, I get two candidates. And at this point in time, neither one of them is somebody that we as a general population yeah. would have picked. Yes. So it is it is an illusion of choice. Right. But we need, you know, we need more education. I think that's part of it. You can't have a, a, a semi-educated conversation with somebody who doesn't know anything mm-hmm. or has no desire to learn those things. That's like you're dead in the water. You know, how do you make the machine move? Yeah, and... More and more people are getting their news from TikTok and, you know, who knows what, who knows what, the, if you don't have the facts, if you're not all talking about the same facts, then how are you going to make decisions? Yeah. If with anything. Yeah. Yeah. You're a registered Democrat mm-hmm. and you ran as a Republican and now you have a Republican majority on the town board right. uh, in your second term. So how has that helped slash hurt you? As far as moving projects forward and, and planning things, it has helped me. Mm-hmm. Because I know that when we need to vote on something, we'll we'll you know we'll be able to plan it and and vote on it. You know, the last two years I never was able to win a vote. <laughs> right. right. And the problem with that is when people are voting not based on what's best for the taxpayers, but 
because they want their political party to get an advantage. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I ha I was in a situation where people were, you, you know, they're voting because they wanted to hurt me, not because right. it was the better choice. Mm -hmm. So, so things are things are better. Yeah, well, there seems to be a lot of that going on. I could talk about this for hours, but right. yeah, it it it's disheartening. It's very disheartening. I think that a lot of people are um, not necessarily friends of democracy, even though they happen to be in positions of power. And I think that there's a lot of distrust out there. But I think that at the local level, there is more trust. Because at the local level, let's say a village, you know your village mayor because he probably lives down the block. Right. And you see him in the store. Mm. So there is more accountability. There's more trust. Right. Same with the town. People know me because I'm around. You know, mm -hmm. I actually go to events. I see. I see. Really, you get out of the yeah. office. Yeah. Oh what, yeah, I love to. I love to get out of the what office. What a novel idea. Yeah. But local, you you can get to know your local representatives, and you know, town mm -hmm. is local. Even county, Nassau County, you can get to know them. You see them. They're yeah. here, at the state and federal level. You know, they're kind of losing touch. Mm -hmm. New York has voted to move the local elections into the even years, which is the state and federal elections. Right, right. I am challenging that. I'm, I'm complaining against that mm -hmm. because the local candidates will not be heard. Right. They will be... Too much static. They will be lost. Right, Local right. candidates will not have a voice. Mm -hmm. You won't get to talk about local issues right. because it will be drowned out True. By, by the national issues. Too and, much noise. And, yes, and, yeah. mo and money. Well, Too much got, noise and money. And the other thing is, is the way we're set up is propaganda. We, you know, people keep talking about the fairness doctrine, and I don't think that's going to fix the problem we have. The fairness doctrine basically uh, addresses: if I give a Republican twenty minutes, I got to give his counterpart twenty yeah. minutes. It doesn't say anything about people have to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. So. The fairness doctrine will just do that. It it'll put more noise on the airwaves. That isn't yeah. necessarily yeah uh, right. Know, equal time for for both garbage liars. <laughs> right. And I've told my listening audience countless times: when you get during election time, when you get those little cards in the mail, throw them out. Yeah, because there isn't a word of truth on either side. There's slogans. Uh, so it's, and, it's and, sloganeering, and oftentimes outright lies mm -hmm. that are slogans. Um, you know what? What's happening to? We're in an atmosphere now, and I heard this said the other day, and it really it rang with me because we're in an atmosphere now of one-upmanship. Mm -hmm. Who has more money? And and there's no time for compassion and empathy. We don't have that anymore. Yeah. And I think when the founding fathers wrote those original documents, they maybe erroneously but assumed that the people that would be implementing those things were honest. If nothing else, mm -hmm. they were honest. Right. And now that we don't have that ingredient, those things don't seem to work. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's always a peg in the machine someplace. Somebody throws their shoe in and, you know, it gets screwed yeah. up. Yeah. It, it's scary. Yeah. Um, democracy is not convenient. It takes work. Well, and you're a perfect example. You know, you get in, you have, what do you, it's a two year term, two -year right? Term. So you have a two year term. So you got to hit the ground running. Yeah. You got to go. Yeah. And you can't spend your two years learning what your job is right. supposed to be. You got to start out doing it. Right. Man, you know, um, so it, it presents so many problems. Whereas, well, if we just had one guy who could point at something and say, get rid of that, get this done, get that done. Wouldn't that be great? Mm -hmm. That's their, you know, the idea. But all of the, I don't know, the main ideas of, of a democratic government or republic, that's all gone. That, yeah. that goes by the wayside. Yeah, but we'll get things done so much. Yeah, but maybe not the things you'd agree with. Right. Um, you know, it's a dangerous line that we're walking on. Mm -hmm. And I really think we're in danger of losing what we've all come to except as our form of government. Mm -hmm. People don't realize it's still an experiment. Mm, right, we're not that old. No, no. And uh, hey, we'll, we'll see. Mm -hmm. We still don't know. Mm -hmm. it's a, it is interesting what a young country we are. When you, when you look at England and, you know, Spain, like look at the history the of thousands Spain. Thousands of oh years gosh. of history. Yeah, right. yeah. Right, right. So you, we got a minute or two. You want to say anything? A minute or two and Leave then we're done? On a light, lighter note. We're yeah, almost it happens done? fast, right? I want to mention that uh, May is Mental Health Month. Mm. 
And I want to speak to all of your college students uh, about the future. You know, the future is out there. And so if you, you know, feel sad, you feel like something hasn't gone right, um, you know, the, the, the world that you see on social media, it's very overwhelming, but it mm-hmm. will change in the future. There's a hotline now called 988 where you can call and talk to someone if you're feeling despair, you feel like you don't want to, you know, keep keep dealing with your problems. You can call 988 also if you're worried about someone else, if you're worried about a friend or a family member. Mm. Um, call 988. You, they will connect you to resources or, or they will just talk. So, um, is that a North Hempstead number? No, no, that's that, national. That's an every, this is oh, national. national. There have been, um, Beautiful. you know, crisis lines around, but you don't always remember those numbers. So, yeah. 988, 988 is, you know, it's now national. Um, you can text or call. Right. And, uh, you are not alone and people need you. Mm. So, um, so, you know, reach out. There are people who, who uh, want to talk to you. I also always want to talk about fentanyl, which is a poison that, you know, it is in six out of 10 pills being seized by the DEA. So you cannot experiment with any pills anymore. Yeah. You just can't only go to your doctor, um, to get your, to get your medication. Yeah. And I'd like to encourage people to come to our fireworks for Memorial Day weekend. Okay. Um, and I, I, I thank all of our military, all of our people who have fought for our democracy, for our the freedoms that we enjoy. And um, we must always remember the people who made the ultimate sacrifice, them and their families who made the ultimate sacrifice. So that's what Memorial Day is all about. Um, our amazing fireworks celebration is the Saturday night of M- Memorial Day weekend at Bar Beach, also known as North Hempstead Beach Park. And we have music. You want to try and get there about 6 o'clock and set up and uh, and enjoy the fireworks. And, and remember to thank our veterans and remember those who gave their lives for our country. Mm, very big. Well, my guest today has been Miss Jennifer DeSena, the supervisor of the town of North Hempstead. Again, thank you for taking the time to be here to speak with us today. Uh, about a lot of important issues and promise, uh, you got to promise us you'll come back. Of it's course. About six months or so to update on all the good stuff happening, you know, happening in the township. But the clock on the wall says it's time for this week's Long Island News to get on out of here. I'm Bill McIntyre. Remember, you can listen to us by searching for this week's Long Island News wherever you listen to podcasts. And we're right here every Friday at 3 p.m. on the radio on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. 